All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be doing an oil leak repair. And what we're going to be going after is this camshaft solenoid valve here in the front. But before we actually look at the problem, I'm going to show you the engine this applies to. So this is an Ecotec 1.4 liter turbocharged engine. There's several designs of this. The one with the oil filler cap here and the oil dipstick here is the one this applies to. I'll put the option numbers for this engine in the video description and the years that it covers in the title. But this is the guy we're after here in the front. We've got two of these, one here for the intake valve, one here for the exhaust valves. And the problem we've got here is pretty common on these. Get a flashlight here and show you. If we take a look and zoom in here, the problem we've got is you can see this electrical connector is all covered with oil and what that's indicative of is the internal seal on this solenoid has failed and it's leaking oil out through the connector and then it's eventually wicking its way all over the rest of the the harness the t there's two places these can leak this is one the other one it can leak is there's a seal behind here there's an external seal that's inside the engine and when you pull this out I'll show it to you and you can get a mirror and check for that that kind of leak is going to appear on the outside edge. So we can see on the bottom here, there's no oil leaking from the bottom outside of this guy. And then if we take a look at the one on the intake, we're all clean on the electrical connector and we're all clean on the bottom. There's no oil residue on this guy. He's nice and clean. He's got a little bit of rust on him, but that's cosmetic. We don't care about that. So we're not going to touch the intake. It's fine. We're only going to replace this one on the exhaust. To get it off, it's an external Torx E10. We're just going to take these two fasteners off here. I'm just going to loosen them first. Before I actually pull it, I'm going to disconnect the uh, wiring harness. Just want to get them loose first. All right, and now to get the wiring harness off, there's a little locking tab. Again, if we really zoom in here, so you can see what I'm doing, it's kind of cramped. You know, you can get more space. You can pull the airbox off. Um, this is a this is a 2012 Chevrolet Cruze, but this is the same engine on the Sonic, the Trax, the Buick Encore. There's a number of GM vehicles that use this engine. So I'm going to come up underneath this to show you. So there's this little gray lock that has to be pulled out like that and then with that pulled out we're going to push down and I like to just come on the other side and lift up on it at the same time and get this guy to let go and, and again you know you can get more room if you uh, pull the box out of the way now with this guy pulled out let me grab our flashlight again lift this up a little bit and zoom in right we can see how this is just caked with oil just caked with oil and that's not supposed to be like that guys um, oil is not supposed to be used to lubricate the electrical circuits the problem with this is used motor oil can attack the connectors and cause oxidation and it can also cause oxidation on the copper that's inside the wiring harness if it manages to wick down that far. So you don't want to let this go too far. Um, this kind of problem can also get oil on the serpentine belt. The serpentine belt and the radiator hoses, that soft kind of rubber, if you get used motor oil on that, it'll start to soften it up on the spots where it soaks in and cause premature failure for those parts as well. So it's definitely something you want to address. All right, so we're going to pull these two E10 fasteners off. That's the only thing holding this guy on. There's one. Just gonna lay them up here where they won't get lost. And then here's two. Now sometimes there's a seal. I mentioned that before there's a seal on the backside. Sometimes that seal can get uh, stuck on here. And so what you wanna do is you get this guy off. First take note of the position. So you, if you notice, the position of the connector on this exhaust one is facing down and the position of the connector on this intake one over here is facing towards the firewall. The position of these is very important and when you put it back in it's got to be in the same position. But to get it off we're going to take this guy 
and we're going to twist him towards the radiator. Just like you see me doing here, right? Just going to give him a twist like that. And that twist is going to help break any adhesion that you've got on this seal right here. This is the inner seal I was talking about. So this is the second thing that can fail. This inner seal can fail. And if the inner seal fails, you'll start getting oil leaking past the flange. But internally, if the inside seal that you can't service fails, then you get this leaking like you see. It's just dripping oil right out of the electrical connector, right? So this is a failed internal seal on this solenoid. It doesn't matter that it's still working. Uh, you let it go long enough, and then it won't be working. We're getting it before it gets to that point. So let me show you what we're going to replace this with. If we only had a problem with that seal, that external seal, you can service that separately. It's a GM 5559 2715, and as you can see, that's just the seal that goes on the inside bore. To replace the whole unit, though, which is what we've got to do in this situation, it's going to be a GM 2519 5245, and that's going to be the, the whole unit, which will include another one of these inner seals. Right? So if we kind of open this little bag here, be a little bit easier to see. All right, so this seal is already applied here, already installed rather. All right, so the only prep that we need to do before we install the seal, we're just going to come in here with some brake clean, and we're going to clean up this connector here that's been soaking in used motor oil, right? And then we're going to clean off this inside bore where the seal sits, right? So this piece right here. Now there's a couple of things that can go wrong. If you took this off and the seal is particularly degraded, and again, I'm talking about this inner seal, it can crack and break into pieces. And sometimes those pieces can be stuck inside this bore. I've seen that happen. Resist the urge to use a metal pick to get that out because this is all aluminum. And if you use a steel pick and cut some scratches in here, the oil is going to wick past the seal and you're going to have a leak even with a new seal. If you get a situation where this is stuck in here, you're going to need to use a, a plastic or wooden type tool, like a wooden dowel, to pry it out and, and, and avoid damaging the aluminum. So I'm not going to bore you guys with uh, cleanup here. Like I said, I'm just going to soak some brake clean on here and clean this off. And then I'm going to get down here and we're just going to, we're going to kind of soak this guy and get all of this off of this connector. So let me clean this up and we'll come back and install the new valve. All right, we got all that cleaned up. You can see the bore's nice and clean with brake clean, top and bottom. You come in here, it's helpful to have a mirror so that you can verify your work. Take a look at the top part and verify that it's all clean as well. And again, if you did have a situation where the seal broke, make sure you get all those pieces out. All right, so if we zoom out a moment, I'm going to take our new solenoid valve. I'm going to take a cap here that I've got of clean motor oil, clean motor oil, not used motor oil. And I'm not going to put much on here. As you can see, I'm just going on the beveled edge, just on the beveled edge, just the beveled edge. Now, why am I doing this? Well, as we put this in that bore, now that it's all dried out from brake clean, we don't want this seal getting hung up, twisted, or torn. Right. So now we're going to slide this guy in, and we can use that kind of same twisting motion that we used to get it out, to get it in position. We'll line up our, our holes for our fasteners, thread them in by hand because, again, it's aluminum. Take note that you've got this connector in the correct position. And then we're going to tighten this down to 71 inch-pounds of torque for the clamping force on these two fasteners. And then after we get this done, I'll show you some pages in the service manual. It's one. That's two. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
a little bit of deoxit G5, and we're going to take our connector, which we've got all nice and cleaned off and purged of the oil. And just in case, right where the connectors are, we're going to put some of this in there to stave off any oxidation. Now I'm going to reach my hand back under the air intake pipe. I'm going to plug this guy back in, and then we're going to push this lock. We zoom in here, right? Remember, it's very important to get this lock back into position so this doesn't come off while you're driving. Okay, we're done with the repair. Let me show you some pages in the service manual now. I'm going to pull that over here. And you can kind of check the work that we just did. So let's zoom out for a second. And if we take a look at what GM tells you to do to remove the camshaft position actuator solenoid valve. In this case, they're talking about removing both. We only removed one. There's no requirement to replace them both. You'll see it doesn't say anything about that. We only replaced the one that was needed. So they're talking about removing the fasteners, and they're talking about if you remove the intake camshaft, carefully turn it counterclockwise in this position. You see the arrow right there. And if you're removing the exhaust position actuator, turn it clockwise. So you see the arrow right here. And the turning to the positions here, so you can see that the electrical connector has moved from here to there and has moved from here to there. This is just to release adhesion on the seal and try to prevent that seal from cracking and breaking while it's inside the engine. That's the only reason for this turning. And then they talk about pulling this all out and they're emphasizing make sure that you get the valve and the seal. Don't leave the seal in there. Don't leave pieces of the seal in there. And that's it. That's it for the removal. And then when we take a look at reinstallation, we can see it's just the reverse. Put these guys back in. Reinstall your fasteners and torque to 71 inch-pounds, which is what we did. And then make sure that the position of the connectors is as shown in the diagram. So. The one that's on the intake is facing right here towards the firewall, and it's kind of perfectly level like that. And the one on the exhaust is kind of hanging kind of southeast here at a 45-degree angle. Those are the two positions you should have. So I hope this helps you out in fixing this kind of an oil leak. Go ahead and give your engine a startup. Make sure you don't get any codes. The only reason you would is if you didn't hook up the connector properly or if there's a problem with the connector. If you got questions or comments, leave them below. I'll try to help. If you found this useful to get your repair done yourself and save you a lot of money on labor, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.